Today we are going to learn how to make peppermint macarons. We're going to be using sugar beans Swiss method recipe. This calls for 190 grams of almond flour, 170 grams of powdered sugar. You want to push your dry ingredients through the sifter and discard any large pieces. Next we need 160 grams of egg whites and you can just separate the eggs. Once we have all the egg whites separated, we now need 150 grams of granulated sugar. This is optional, but I also use dried egg white powder, and I use 6 grams. Here, I'm combining the granulated sugar and the dried egg white powder. Over simmering water, place your egg whites and add your granulated sugar. You want to whisk until all the sugar is dissolved, and you can check this by lifting up the whisk and fill for any grains. If you no longer feel any grains, that means your sugar is dissolved. Hey, it's Amy. I wanted to pop in real quick and say, you know, it's one thing to learn how to make macarons watching a YouTube video, but if you've ever wished that you could bake alongside someone that already knows how to make macarons and ask questions and get feedback, today's your lucky day. I have started teaching private virtual macaron classes. I have a special running for the month of December 2020 where you can get a private virtual two and a half hour class for $50. I also have a confidence builder package where you can buy three classes and get the fourth one free. Gift certificates are available as well if you're not ready to book the class but want to lock in the price. These make great gifts for yourself, for your baker friends, or someone aspiring to learn how to make macarons. To get more information, just click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Now transfer your egg whites to your mixer. We're going to slowly increase the speed to a mid-high speed and beat until we reach stiff peaks. You can see how the meringue is within the middle of the whisk. And look at those sharp points. This is stiff peaks. You want to stop. Next, we're going to add our sifted dry ingredients to the meringue. Fold the dry ingredients into the meringue. And this is just really doing swirls around the bowl and occasionally going through the middle. Keep going until you have the ingredients well incorporated. Now it's time for the macronage stage. We're going to continue folding and do occasional strokes through the middle where we spread out the batter. Um, just keep doing this until you reach a ribbon-like stage. Now look at how the batter ribboning off the spatula. And it's starting to fall back into itself in the bowl. This is where we want to stop the macronage stage. Now let's transfer the batter to a piping bag. I'm actually going to split the batter and put all white into one bag. And then I'm going to stripe a second piping bag with red stripes. Using a small paintbrush, use that to paint thin stripes along the inside of the piping bag. And then transfer your batter into the bag as usual. Cover your work surface with a towel. Use a template if you like and start piping your shells. Once we finish piping, we're going to remove the template and bang our tray onto the towel to release any air bubbles. Any remaining air bubbles, you can use a toothpick or a scribe to help pop those bubbles. After piping and releasing the air bubbles, you wanna rest your shells. This can take anywhere from 15 minutes to one hour. Now it's time to bake. I bake at 14 minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius. You may need to make adjustments depending on your oven. This recipe calls for four ingredients. The first step is to cream the butter. Next, I add all the powdered sugar, the peppermint extract, and the milk, 
and just beat until I get the desired creaminess. Remember those plain white shells? Now it's time to decorate them. Add a splash of vodka or extract and a drop or two of red food coloring. Using a brush, you can add brush strokes to the shells. With a paintbrush, you can also paint designs onto the shell. I'm not a very good freehand artist, but this will give you an idea. You can also use the corner of a brush if you want thinner brush strokes. That just gives it a different look if you like. Another way to dress up your macarons is to split out your filling and add a little food coloring. For fun, I'm using a star tip, which is the tip 21, to add texture and dimension to the filling. Using the same tip, now I'm just going to make a swirl with the filling to give it a different texture and dimension. Here's a closer look at making little stars with the filling. Don't you love the two-toned look of the filling? It gives it such a fun and festive look. Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And while you're here, check out this other macaron video. Have a wonderful and blessed day.